Hi there, everyone. My name is Pirag Jutani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale University. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I'm sure a lot of people have thought about before, which is the validity of the MCAT score in terms of gauging your success in medical school. Uh, for a very long time, the individuals who have made the MCAT and also medical schools have stated that the MCAT has a pretty big role because it allows individuals to see if they're ready for the rigor that medical school has to offer. But does it actually correlate with medical school success? Well, the source for today's video is coming from this article, which is MCAT scores and medical school success, do they correlate? This was published by the AMA, which is the American Medical Association. And as always, I'm going to link this source in the description below so you can get a deeper insight into where it's all coming from. The basic aspect of this article, though, is that the average MCAT score for students who matriculated, and this is a very fancy word for people who just started first year of medical school, the average MCAT score for students who matriculated to medical school um, 2021 to 2022 this past year was 511.9, which is around 512. Based on 2019 data, if you scored in the average range, your chance of adva advancing from the first year of medical school to the second year was around 98%. Similarly, if you scored even 10 points lower, though, even if you scored a 501, your uh, acceptance, uh, your chance of passing uh, year two, uh, your passive chance of getting to year two was 94%. So all this to say, clearly the MCAT is not as good a barometer to determine whether you go through year one to year two and year two to year three, because for the most part, it seems like most people are able to make that transition quite well. But believe it or not, the MCAT does actually have some value, and I'm going to show you that value just now. Um, one thing is that the MCAT seems to be a bit better predictor than GPA in terms of determining um, how successful someone will be in medical school, medical school success. And I'm going to talk about what that means in the next two slides, but I will tell you that the MCAT was a bit better than the GPA. However, the more effective indicator is both MCAT scores and GPA. So someone who has a great MCAT score on top of a great GPA is likely to fare much better than someone who has a great MCAT score, but maybe not as high a GPA or vice versa. But it is interesting to note that the MCAT score was a slightly better predictor than GPA, considering the GPA's uh, a weighted average of how you've been doing over four years of work. So now let's actually talk a bit about basic papers that have been written on this subject, which is does MCAT predict medical school and PGY-1 performance. For individuals who don't know, PGY-1 means postgrad year one, which means your first year of residency. What you really want to know is, does the score you get on your MCAT allow you to do well in medical school? And if it does allow you to do well in medical school, does that then translate over to residency? Because in residency, you're actually doing the real stuff, which is taking care of patients and uh, trying to be the best damn doctor you can be. So if a good MCAT score means that you end up being a better, better you know, doctor down the road, well then great. That's, that's definitely what we think the MCAT is doing as of right now. But if it doesn't, then we need to think about those gaps and if this is actually as meaningful a test as we've made it out to be. So now let's talk about the results of this study. The study methods, and again, I'm going to link this study in the description below as well so you can see it, but the study used data collected as part of a long-term career outcome study uh, to determine associations between MCAT scores, USMLE Step 1, which is a huge test, uh, and when this paper was published, this was a, a test that was out of 300. Most recently, step one is now pass fail, but just remember for the sake of this paper, it was a numerical score. Step two CK, which is also a numerically scored test. Um, we then did uh, step two CS, which has since been discontinued, but remember that they did look at associations with that. And step three, which is actually an exam that you have to take in your intern year of um, residency. They also associated MCAT score and tried to see if there was an association between OSCEs, which are your ability to do physical exams and take care of patients in a standardized setting, uh, as well as PGY-1 perform program director assessment. So whenever you go to residency, your program director assesses you, and they tried to see if the people with higher MCAT scores tended to have better reflections. And believe it or not, they actually did find that the MCAT was weakly associated with GPA, Right, so people who had higher MCATs tend to have higher GPAs. It was also associated weekly, weekly, with uh, step two CK scores and step three scores, which is good. It does seem to have some level of bearing on how you do well on the test. People with higher MCAT scores tend to do a bit better on these standardized tests that you have to take in medical school. The MCAT scores were weakly to moderately associated with step one scores. And again, this was back in the day when step one was a graded exam. And so you know that, oh wow, okay, so it does have a bearing on your step one score. It seems to be that there is a relationship. 
However, and here is the kicker here, the MCAT scores were not significantly associated with step two CS, which is about you know, which was all about in-person patient care. It was it didn't have anything to do with your OSCEs, and it also had nothing to do with your PGY one program director evaluations. People with higher MCAT scores didn't necessarily get better evaluations from their program directors, and usually those evaluations, I personally think, are likely to be the most indicative of how you are as a doctor because um, that would be. De de demonstrating how you're performing as a resident and um, how you ultimately are doing overall, at least in my head. Again, I'm not a resident yet, so I can't particularly say. But all this to say, clearly the MCAT is associated with well-being on certain tests early on in medical school. But I do want you to see that it often falls apart when you think about real doctoring and real patient care. And now we actually have hard statistical facts for that because we actually have this paper that was published. And you should definitely also check out this article. So both of those will be linked in the description below. Um, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you dropped a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.